Welcome back to another UNC Tar Heels basketball podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our fast-growing YouTube channel, that is called Tar Heel Illustrated. I am THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me is our director of basketball recruiting and analyst, longtime AAU college and high school coach, David Sisk. And David, we continue to preview North Carolina's basketball season, doing a podcast on individual returning scholarship guys or the transfers which is uh one of the guys we're going to hit on here in this podcast Dawson Garcia six foot eleven sophomore 235 pounds came over from Marquette where he led the Warriors uh or the Eagles excuse me the Warriors were the Al McGuire days uh where he led them in scoring at 13 points and in rebound 6.6 per game 48 percent from the floor 35.6 percent from three made 26 threes last year. He was first team all Big East, all freshman team, and he was the Big East freshman of the week three times. We'll throw a few other numbers out here in a couple of minutes. But David, what are your thoughts about Dawson Garcia as we close in on uh, the countdown to the opener? And as we speak right here, I've got Dodgers Giants going on. I've got Eagles uh, Buccaneers, and I've got uh cj cup professional golf go and doll and, and the reason i said that is dawson garcia is a guy that can make me hold my focus and not watch that stuff okay so that's good well, you know, well good intro uh <laughs> as you know um i waved the pom-poms for dawson dawson garcia last year you know that and i said even before there was any talk about a transfer or anything. Uh, he was one of my favorite players. I loved what he could do, uh, all the ways he could beat you at his side, 6'11", long. And then everybody got to see it firsthand when he played North Carolina. He was just had a brilliant game, matchup nightmare. And, you know, North Carolina, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but they've not really had a guy like that. That, that can do those different things at his size, yeah. you know, in a while. No, um, and it's going to be a different look. Here's the thing. As I watched him more and more, he's not, obviously he, he he's not a big bruiser like Baycott, but he's not just a stretch catch and shoot guy as much as Manic. He, you know, he made, uh, you know, a, a decent percentage of his three pointers but that wasn't necessarily his bread and butter game. He can do so many things. You know, he, he's yeah. good in the pick and pop. He's good in the pick and roll. I just noticed when he gets to switches, uh, he's able to either, you know, he, he shoots the ball well enough to force a closeout. And then he's really good at attacking closeouts. And it's the big uh, normally uh, uh, that has to come a bigger guy. If they don't switch, he can make them respect that and then beat them to the rim. And if they don't come, he can shoot the three. If you get to switch with a guard, he's very good about going into the roll and then duck sealing the post up and creating the mismatch there. So I looked at a number of ways. There was more to it than just shooting the three or – uh, getting to the rim. Like I said, he did already had a good mid range. He could go in and seal and post up. He, he just does so many different things. That's one thing I like. And then also to me, he can play the four or the five. Uh, he can step out on the four, use his, you know, use that side. He's, he's good enough out on the perimeter, but I like him on the five because he could step a bigger guy out and play a true uh, five out, or he can go down to the block. He's big enough. He's comfortable down there. Uh, he can dribble a guy in to the lane from the mid post area and, and get in there and go up over him. So he can beat you not only in a number of ways, but from a number of spots on the floor and really never do the same thing twice. Got a very well-rounded game and a, and a large repertoire of uh, uh, offensive moves to do it with. One of the things I really like about him and watching a lot of uh, Marquette's games from last year over the last few months, he really economizes his movement very well. And I think that's important if you're going to be in a situation where Hubert wants to spread things out. Because sometimes you can get too crowded on the perimeter. 
if you have a guy that doesn't waste his movement and, and, and everything he does has value, he always has to be accounted for. And then you add the fact that he can score from the perimeter, as you noted, with the 26 threes, but also he can score a lot of other places and draw a lot of fouls. He's a guy that can get opposing, uh, you know, fours, fives, in a lot of foul trouble, get to the line a lot. And if you look at some of his best games last year against some really good teams, he was excellent from the free throw line. I think he's around 78%, something like that. So I think he's a guy that that there's there's not a lot of mess with his game. There's just a lot of tight efficiency. He doesn't always shoot it well, but he's not a guy that's going to take a lot of bad shots. He's not a guy that's going to kill a good possession with, with a silly move or an awkward uh, move to the basket or, or, or a me first kind of play. I think he's going to fit in really well with what they're doing. And if Armando and Caleb are the guys, I think Garcia will be comfortable with that, but he can also in that role be a 25 point guy, guy on certain nights. I see no reason why Dawson can't be the guy. And uh, I understand that Caleb Love has a higher ceiling when you look at NBA draft and Baycott, you know, with, with that ACC experience. But, you know, you, you were talking about last year. Let's go back to Marquette first. Um, and we don't know. There was inconsistencies. If you look at Marquette last year, I think a lot of us were surprised that the record was as poor as what it was. It led to Wojo, you know, being fired. Yeah. Uh, they were inconsistent. You know, they could beat North Carolina one night. You know, they could play with Villanova and Creighton and all those teams one night. They had some players. They had some players. Yes, and then lose to anybody in the country the next night. Um, But Garcia was inconsistent too. Yeah. So what comes first, chicken or egg? Was he inconsistent because the team was or vice versa or a little of both? We don't know. Um. so you got to feel like it's a fresh start for him. But, you know, you talked about being able to draw fouls and things. And you go back to North Carolina game. He just – he tied them up in knots, the bigs. Yeah. He wasn't necessarily – and went on the perimeter, putting the ball on the floor, he's not necessarily a blow-by guy. Like I said, he's a guy where you have to respect the shot enough that then he can attack. And then he can get into the rim and go over. Or then he can get the dribble into the lane and, and go to a, a pseudo post up out of that, um, you know, and, and, and draw fouls and, and draw contact and, and, and really make the defender guess. So just, you know, a wide variety. And, and I guess the thing that I probably want to see, and I think most people will, in the basketball world is just consistency. Can he do it every night? You know, can he just be a solid? You know, you talked about those big nights. I would rather – and that that gets – I'm going to go off the subject here, but it's kind of the same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the world and, you know, you might not want to hear about professional golf. But, I'm, I'm no, I'm, I'm going to make the, the comparison here because I had never thought about it. Um, there's a, a, a golf fantasy podcast out there for ones that play the fantasy leagues. And it's about who, who you take to win the tournaments and all that. And their question was, would you rather have a guy who's going to finish in the top 20 in every event and rack up all these points and all this money? Or would you rather have a guy that you never hear from and every three or four months he pops up, and when he does, and he misses eight cuts in a row, but when he pops up, he's going to finish in the top two or three or maybe even win the golf tournament. And a lot of it was we would rather have that guy because he's got that ceiling when he's ready to go. He is special. And and then when he's not, he's not. Then that guy who just, you know, hangs around every night. I don't know what you would rather have in a basketball. I think I would rather have the consistent guy. Yeah. Instead of 30 points one night, six points the next night. That's what he kind of gave last year. I would like to have a Dawson Garcia who could average, I don't know, between 12 and 14 points, get about six to eight rebounds a night, probably get his three-point percentage uh, between 35, closer to 40%. 
get his field goal numbers up a little bit. Probably not going to shoot as much this year as he did at Marquette, but become more efficient and become consistent. If he does that, to me, he's more effective and North Carolina becomes a, 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 a really tough out. I compare some of uh, his better games versus some of his uh, not so great games. And when, and usually when Marquette got pounded, he didn't do a lot. There was yeah. one game against Villanova in which he did, but he scored most of his points before Villanova took off. That was a close game into the second half and he was rolling and then Villanova shut him down. Now, I don't know if it was totally because somebody just guarded him or I think a lot of times with Marquette, it was you guard the other guys that get him the ball because he wasn't going to be on the ball. So somebody had to get him the ball. And, and, and it looked to me when they went through a lot of their periods where, you know, Providence went on a 25 to six run or something like that. You know, he, he wasn't getting shots. He might get one shot in 10 minutes, one shot in 12 minutes. And that the Villanova game, the one that, that he scored 28, no, that, the last 17 minutes of that game, I think he attempted one or two shots until like the, the minute and a half mark. He didn't get a lot of his points in blowouts. Most of the points he got were in competitive portions of games, either close games through 40 minutes, or like I said, that Villanova game. So I, he definitely needs someone that could get him the ball. And I think he'll help, that'll help him on this team, having guys like Caleb, having guys like Armando, having guys like Kerwin who could shoot when RJ's on the floor. you got to guard everybody. And I think he's going to flourish at times in, that, in, in a lineup like that because you can't just focus on stopping one guy getting another dude the ball or stop him from getting the ball. You got to guard a lot of the floor. I don't think with Marquette last year you had to guard a lot of the floor most nights. Yeah, and he, his ceiling, I, it's going to be interesting because I watched him a lot in AAU in high school because I, mean, I worked at that time for the Minnesota side. And the D1 Minnesota team that they had, it was D1. I mean, th there were about seven or eight high-level Big Ten ACC-type players on that team. And the bell cow was probably Austin Garcia. Hmm. Uh, Kerwin Walton, uh, Ben Carlson, I'm, I'm trying to think of, man, there, there was a ton of guys. And it was it was one of the best teams in the country. And uh, – but he was the, the, the really the, the highest-ranked guy on that team. And – he was right there, legitimate five-star type guy, right there at that high four, low five cutoff. Um, and then now you look at his draft stock, and he's not on anybody's top 100 board or not on anybody's mock draft. So you kind of wonder what is that ceiling now? How Because like you say, their games, he just looks phenomenal. Yeah, You know, if you look at North Carolina, the game last year, you kind of look at it and you say, well, isn't that the kind of game that NBA scouts want out of their bigs? Yeah. The versatility yeah. and all that that he can do. and But, you know, it didn't resonate. So that that's why I'm saying that I, I'm interested to see this year. I'm really interested consistency and just to kind of see what his – what his ceiling is because I, I think he's to me he's the most fascinating player on on this team uh I, I you know I I, I have uh, last year there was a big man who was a freshman who got drafted in the first round and that was my guy last year Dawson Garcia is this year because I'm just interested to see where their ceiling's at you know, the other thing that people don't talk about too much is that game against Carolina, he was really good defensively. Mm -hmm. He was forcing – he forced a turnover on Baycott at the baseline where Baycott just got twisted into a pretzel. Now, his length and his presence, and again, a guy who kind of economizes his movement. Uh, he, he was a presence down there. It's going to be interesting to see how Carolina is defensively, especially when those two are in the game. That's a lot of length around the basket. But it's also guys that can move a little bit. So if they have to get out and defend 15 feet away, I think they'll be able to do that. So uh, I could see Dawson playing a lot of minutes on this team. And, and uh, you're right. I mean, he couldn't be in the go-to guy. My point earlier was that if it is Caleb and Normando, I think he'll be fine. Serving that role as a three who could go off it at times and certainly be on one of the all ACC teams. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the defense and I've been thinking about the offensive side of it, but defensively, North Carolina's bigs last year, that was a 
def- on the defensive end, when they got pulled out on the court, that was a major weakness for that North Carolina team. Yeah. Because teams started putting them in ball screen action and they 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 were too big, they couldn't switch, they couldn't extend the defense. They started, you know, they played uh, really vanilla. They, they played off the ball in the lane, and teams figured out when yeah. we turn that corner on the ball screen, there's nobody there to hedge it. We are going to turn that thing downhill, and the guards are good enough in the ACC where they can do that, and they yeah. really struggle with good, fast guards. And I just see, uh, you know, like with Dawson, uh, and maybe even with Brady Manick some, that they're able to to do some switching. They're really able to hedge harder. Even if they can't switch, they can hard hedge and recover and, and just not stand back in the lane and, and, and let guys take horse shots. You know, yeah. that was I think they're gonna be so much better at that this year. That's something I want to see early in these games. And if they are, I, I think that can could could contribute to three, four more wins just on that on its merit alone. I was at uh, the second practice, watched the whole practice, and that was something they worked on for about an hour. So, you know, Hubert is not shy about pointing out things they didn't do well last year, and that was one of them. And, and you're right. And I think that uh, that big a point of emphasis. And, he, and his, he's not supremely agile, but he's agile quick enough. And, again, he's got a, an, an economical stride. So I think he can handle that as well at all. Um, anything else on Nelson Garcia? Well, I'll just talk about that subject you're on about defensively. I talked to a North Carolina assistant a couple of weeks back. I wanted to talk, ask him about recruiting, and he said, man, I don't know. He said, I'm just trying to figure out how we can guard a ball screen. So, <laughs> you know, that was that was back in the summer. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, there <laughs> – I don't know if he was – that was just something he picked out of the air. That, well, that was, if he being, watched film of the 29 games last year, that stood out. <laughs> I believe it's something that that's a really a, a, a priority. So, you know, these bigs with Garcia, like you said, not only offensively, but defensively, but I think they're going to be much more agile with their bigs and able to do different things. Uh, and not, not just, just kind of big and cumbersome. And to help them, I think the guards are going to be better at handling this <laughs> stuff too. So it'll take some of the stress off the big as well. Yeah. So if you get around a screen, if you get through a screen, it takes a lot of the pressure off the big as well, David. You're you're right. All right. He's David. I'm AJ. Thanks for stopping by.